Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're listening to Guild Wars Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network. Brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon at doghousesystems.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Guild Wars Reporter. This is episode 113. I'm Celeste and as always I'm joined by the lovely Alona. The lovely and tired Alona. I'm tired too. We are very excited and happy, but we have Maguma hangovers. Yeah, pretty close. So (laughs) we're like, we're ready to do the show to talk about it. We are And we're happy. And we're enthused and excited. (laughs) It's just... Lack of energy. Let's leave it at that. (laughs) Say we're really happy and we're excited and we can't wait to talk about this stuff, but I am tired. Of course I need sleep. (laughs) Exactly. It's been one of those weeks. Mm -hmm. So before we jump into anything else, I do want to make it extremely clear. Extremely clear. Slow motion clear. (laughs) Yes. We're going to be talking about the update. It's going to be very spoilery. If you don't want to be spoiled, pause it, go play. (laughs) Don't play. Come back when you're ready. Exactly. Young lady or young man. Or older people. (laughs) Smooth Celeste. (laughs) (laughs) I thought so. (laughs) So I guess we could go ahead and jump into what we did in game this week now that people are hopefully willing to be spoiled. Alona? Oh, I like being spoiled. But not spoilers, though. Mm. So most of the stuff is pre-yesterday's patch. M is for awesome in the chat room. She's in my guild, and we marathoned the last few personal story chapters for her. She wanted to get them done before Living World Season 2 started. So we did like, I don't know how many, like a ton, a ton of her personal stories, and then made plans to do the Ara story dungeon on Saturday night, and we did that, and it was awesome, and it, it was a long fight. It's a long dungeon, mm-hmm. that story it dungeon, is. but, you know, it was still good. Hunter was with us as well as several other people from the guild, but the reason I bring that up is he and I were running through Malcor's Leap while we were waiting for the Ara to start and Mm -hmm. we were doing you know that that event in melkor's where there's the ton of risen i know this narrows it down and Mm -hmm. it's near that bridge and there's the siege weapons and it's really hard to do unless you have a ton of people i think i know what you're talking about yeah in any event we were doing that and i noticed that that he was defeated and i was running over to because i had been hiding in a corner it's what i do it's how i stay alive Mm. He was saying, actually, there's this other player here is only uh, downed. Get her up first. And I said, who? And he said, Asterlin. This player here. I'm like, wait a minute, Asterlin? And <laughs> so I looked. <laughs> and then I got, I talked out to her afterwards. It's the Asterlin that called in to the show and left us that wonderful voice message. That's pretty amazing. I mean, like, super coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... There was a couple other players there as well, but she was she wasn't in a party at all. She was on her own. But it it was I was so excited to find out that it was, it was like that. Most importantly, we hope to see you in game. It happens. <laughs> wow, that's pretty amazing, actually. I was really super jazzed about that. So hey, Ashlyn, it was fun running into you. Oh, I was playing my ranger that day, and who is now eighty. Got her to 80. So now I have four level 80s. Congrats. Yeah. I did a ton of jumping puzzles with Mock on, was that Monday night? I think we did a ton. Uh, yep. Yep. Sunday night, I tried to get gold boss blitz, but I still never did. I got a couple silvers. Yeah. I was actually in a pretty good group, 
but you know sometimes it just doesn't work out i finished the story of the first episode in one day i almost had it i didn't realize i was only missing like two little parts of it went back to finish up or pick up the story from where we had left it off it was like oh we were basically done Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was fun and we'll be talking about more about the patch later and i bought the assassin's outfit and i like it it's cute ancestral one i like better but i i do like this one and i i'm going to use it i know a lot of people don't like the fact that you can't mix and match outfits but i love the outfits love them the last thing was I wanted to say that it was so nice of ArenaNet to launch the new patch on a national holiday for Canada so that I was able to like basically not leave my computer all day and not have to go into work. So yay, patch day Canada day. That's true. You were finally able to experience a patch live with me. Yes, it's true. And that made it super fun. I tried to finish my monthly on Monday, and I got all the (laughs) 25 events that I needed to get done in the morning. And then I was like, okay, I'll do all the jumping puzzles in the evening, and it'll be fine. Well, I missed it by a couple of hours. (laughs) (laughs) So... I didn't get my monthly for June. It made me super (laughs) sad because I actually was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, no, I didn't. You have a talent. I have a talent for hitting Flotsam and Jetsman on the way down of diving goggles and stuff and dying. You have a talent Mm -hmm. for missing things, like missing monthly and stuff like that. (laughs) I really do. I really, really do. That's like, Probably my superpower for Guild Wars 2 is that I always wait until the last minute and then don't get it done. Yeah. My power is procrastination. (laughs) It's true. But you got a jump start on this month's jumping puzzles. That's true. Now I have six out of 12. I'm halfway. Because I had to leave before y'all got everything else done. I'm at 91%. I don't know what that number turns out to be. Probably like 10 Possibly, yeah. I turned in all my tokens and I got my mini panda. Yay! Which is cute. It doesn't take up a bank slot, which is why I got that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That As was... per our conversation last week. <laughs> yeah. And it's a good thing, too, considering all the room that's being taken up in your bags probably now. Very much so, yeah. I had to end up turning one of my characters into a mule. Just have, to have some more bag space. So one of my characters is holding on to like all of the skins that I didn't want to store in wardrobe instead of keeping the transmutation. Okay. I went around in the new area in Dry Top, obviously, and I finished the story this morning. It's fun. I think it's mm-hmm. really pretty. And we will get to that a little bit later. Last night, I played with my husband, Ben, and we (gasps) went through... I know, he played, right? No! uh, Yeah. This is the biggest story of the show right here. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) The problem with that is that I had four crashes and tons of artifacting. But you hadn't before. He was getting it, too, so I'm thinking maybe it's something going on. We have the same um, graphics card, so I'm wondering if maybe there's something wrong with that. But I hadn't seen any other people complain about it on the forums or on Reddit, so I don't know. Were you getting that when we were, like, the group of us no. were? Okay. In so Dry that's... Top, I was totally fine. Interesting. Yep. you think with the environment effects, they would be pretty bad. No, I was playing on decent qualities and everything looked good. It was just in Metrica that it started vomiting all over the place. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. I just pictured your computer going, blah, enjoy the game, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's certainly how I feel when I pop in stuff to the Mystic Forge. Ugh. Oh, back to me. Mm-hmm. I did a, a one of my pack of five try to get Mystic Clovers because I had forgot about it for a little bit. I thought, well, maybe mm-hmm. I'll do that again. I got one Mystic Clover out of five tries. It's better than zero. Bah. 
Bye, say. <laughs> I also picked up the mini frostbite, or rather Ben bought it for me, because I was like, Aww. so cute. Does he make chitter noises? I haven't heard it make any, but I wasn't playing with my sound roll up okay. yesterday night when I was doing that, so. Log in as an Azura and stick your head right close to him and see if it makes a difference. I may have to try that. Because <laughs> they're close to the ground. Yeah, I, I want to find out if it makes little noises, because that would absolutely make it ten times better. I was just happy that I had a little frostbite. Yeah. I actually haven't seen one in, in the game yet, so I'm going to have to log in with you and see, little buddy. Oh, sure. Cool. So let's go ahead and take a second to talk about our live streaming times. We live stream Wednesday nights at 9.30 p.m. EST, 6.30 p.m. PST at twitch.tv slash Reporter. You can subscribe to the audio version of the podcast on iTunes. And remember to rate and review Gilmore's Reporter just because it's good for us to know where we stand. Yes. And in our backlog of reviews, we're moving up the line to a review from another five-star review from Silver Cyclone from the States. And they said, perfect podcast. It's funny and informative. The two things anyone would want in a podcast. Also, live feeds are much better than the recordings. It is fun to listen to, to both and see what gets edited out. This is true. There's a lot of editing. <laughs> you have mad editing skills. I'm like, sometimes I'll know there's like five minutes of segueing and rambling between uh -huh. things and they're like bloop you'd never know <laughs> they just go together <laughs> so thank you for the review silver cyclone we really appreciate it we do indeed report from lion's arch So unless you've been living under a rock, although that would be pretty hard, you know, to get internets and stuff, it'd be, <laughs> that's kind of hard to do. Gates of Maguma have opened out of Brisbane Wildlands and into the new area called Dry Top, which we all kind of knew was going to be happening, but it's pretty awesome. Yes. Story journal. It's Yay. exactly how they said it was going to be. Yes, and it, it's, Except it, oh, what? I, I think it's a little bit more complicated, Do or you? like a little too simplified, in that... <laughs> those, are, those are opposite. <laughs> well, in the sense that you can't, when you replay the episode, you have to replay the whole thing. That's true. I mean, so you can't just like say, oh, I want to do that one instance again. Okay. Yeah, you know, like maybe I want to go back to that one place and look around some more. You're saying like if you're looking in your story journal and you're looking at the segments because they are broken up into segments as well. Mm -hmm. You you would like to be able to click on one of those segments and do that. That would be nice, but I understand yeah. they're trying to make it simple. I mean, I'm not really complaining, but it's like, oh, that would have been a little bit better, I think. I can see the benefit of that, especially if you're trying to achievement hunt. Yeah. Maybe they didn't want people to cherry pick certain instances to farm. That's entirely possible as well. Possible. Anyway. There's a strange disturbance in the tangled western reaches of Brisbane Wildlands, and it's up to you to find what's afoot. Meet up with Sarah Forces in Brisbane and get to the root of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> root. Root. <laughs> we see what you're doing there, pun people. Mm hmm. You'll need to find the ship and its inhabitants to figure out what went wrong. Meet up with Marjorie, Casimir, Brom, Rox, and Timey, and Scruffy to investigate what's causing such a commotion and how it's connected to the fallen Zephyr Sanctum. Actually, someone pointed out that if you never saw the teaser trailer, you wouldn't know what the heck was going on there. Yeah, you'd basically just come into this area and then see the little video of the ship being crashed. I mean, not crashing, but just crashed on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah. And you're like... Okie dokie. They often would have cutscenes that would open as soon as you entered a zone. Like, you remember that with Lion's Arch and stuff like that? That's what happened with Dry Top. The little cutscene that happens is just uh, like oh. a, a pan of the ship crashed. But not, not the leading up to not it. Not crashing. Yeah. Okay. 
As you venture through Dry Top, keep an eye out for inquest devices and operatives. They'll stop at nothing to reach their nefarious goals. So you'd best be prepared for a fight. And who does not love to fight the inquest? No one. Everyone loves to fight the inquest. Everyone. They're pretty easy, so yeah. 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 I mean, they're pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. So it works out for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Completing the story of a living world episode will unlock skill-based achievements with unique rewards that can be earned when replaying the episode. The entire episode. Yes. Not bits uh, Just episode. to make that clear. Yeah. Although that being said, it's not like a huge chunk of time to do that. It's really not. I mean, I'm being nitpicky when I say that it should allow you to pick, you know, certain steps. I think the chapter is just good enough. Yeah, I you aren't the first person I've heard say that, though. I've seen it, like, I think on Reddit and Twitter and mm. Tumblr. And, so I think that's a, a common question about it. Ah. This release brings in a whole passel of new rewards, including new crafting materials, refine amberite into sheets that to be used in crafting gear with bonuses to toughness, healing, and vitality, or harvest cacti to create delicious new dishes. Delicious new dishes is fun to say. You'll mm -hmm. also have a chance to find the new adventurer's spectacles and adventurer scarf, which can be combined to create the stylish and functional adventurer's mantle. And you can get those from the chests that appear during the sandstorms. So it's completely RNG based. I think it was on Reddit. Someone was saying, I opened a chest and got the spectacles. Like the first chest they ever opened. But I want to know how they're functional. Do they like keep you from getting blind or something? I think they're supposed to look like they'd be functional in a sandstorm. Oh. I don't think they actually oh. do okay. anything. The spectacles are like old timey motorcycle goggles mm -hmm. and then the scarf that you tie around your face to keep like bugs out of your teeth and sand out of your mouth and nose and stuff and you combine them so that they become one item that utilizes both those things and i i've seen it on some characters where it looks it's just wrong it doesn't look very good at all but some characters look kick ass with it yeah the beards yeah those poor beards or like super delicate characters can look kind of out of place with it because you look kind of tough oh yeah, yeah with it i can understand that and now the best part of the patch best do you want to say it i'll let you say it kick from guild will no longer appear in user context menus outside of the guild roster wow 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 i'm so happy about that and my guild is very happy about that i'm sure we are <laughs> It's not the best part of the patch, but it is, it's right up there. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. It's pretty that. awesome, actually. Yeah. One of the fixes uh, that they implemented this patch is inquest engineers no longer create flame turrets underwater. Like, aw. Well, okay. Yeah. Take away a little bit of the fun. Yeah. Characters that logged out while in the Mad King's Labyrinth will be rerouted to Lion's Arch. And you asked what I was asking. <laughs> Where were they going before? Were they going back to the labyrinth right now if they had managed to stay in there that whole time? I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My Trin and First Mate Horrocks should now scale appropriately with fractal levels. And I've heard that this made it a lot harder. Fun, but harder. But it was already really hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. oh, well, I guess scale. So I mm -hmm. guess... Yeah. Oh, Romo saying that if you left your tune there, you could go there at any time. Oh, like well, even outside of labyrinth times. That's cool. That's pretty awesome, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of changes to profession skills, and uh, we're totally not going to go over them all because we have so many other things to talk about tonight. I do want to give a shout out to the change to blurred inscriptions. Thank you. Thank you for changing that, Rita Net. What did they change? Blurred inscription was a trait that it said uh, distortion grants reflection, mm -hmm. which distortion is the F4 skill of your shatter skills. Mm -hmm. But you can also take a trait that when you activate signets, you get one second of distortion. But the reflect wasn't working with those signet distortions it was only oh. working with the f4 because i was trying a signet distortion build mm -hmm. 
and the distortion still works, but I also wanted the reflect. <laughs> so Right, yeah. And apparently it does now, and I'm very happy about that. That's good stuff. Now, for those of you that, like us, have finished the story already, you may be incredibly excited to hear that the next one will be in two weeks. So, you know, they're back to the bi-weekly update schedule. Mm -hmm. Don't stray too far. They're going to be sucking you back in in two weeks. Now, do you think that the map will expand in those two weeks? Or it's looking like they're giving us little bits of map at a time. Right. Right. So do you think it's every two weeks that they'll expand? I'm not sure what else we could do in dry top for another two weeks. Like, I mean, yes, there's still stuff to do, but it kind of kind of feels like... As far as story, we have to move on, yeah. Yeah, as, yeah, as far as story, it's done its part. Mm-hmm. And you may need to come back to it for other parts, for bits of parts. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. More map. If that's the case, I like the slow rollout of zones. It's pretty fun. I mean, it, it's not like getting an expansion where you just, like, run around and explore everything all of a sudden. But the area is big enough that that first day you had it explored and it was fun. It didn't feel small, you know? Did you find it that you were still kind of approaching it from the point of view that, I gotta get this done, I only have two weeks? I actually was not. Oh, and I now was... that I know that the next one is in two weeks, I'm kind of glad that I have it done. I had to stop and go, okay, no, I don't have to rush this. I don't, it's not a big deal because I'll be able to finish it whenever. Yeah. Like as yeah. far as the achievements parts, don't have to do it right away. Was it Mojo who was talking about server crashes? I hadn't heard of too much about server crashes because I was thinking that this was possibly the most seamless game update they've ever had. I thought it was a really smooth rollout. That's true. Aside from what I experienced in Metrica, Dry Top was very well done. Yeah. Extremely polished, which is what I love to see. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the amazing things that came out of going through Season 2 and meeting up with people that we haven't seen in a long time is that it assumes, and we knew this before, it assumes that you have beaten Zaitan, you're going to be level 80, and you're done with the personal story as it was before the July 1st update. And I was so extremely happy to Mm -hmm. see Belinda acknowledge the fact that we were commanders of the pact, and it's perfect. Finally get some acknowledgement. (laughs) Yes, you are a commander of the pact. You're kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. In the gem store, since we've already talked about it, there's the Shadow Assassin outfit and the Mini Frostbite, uh, both of which have been purchased by either you or me. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I really like, at least on the lady version of the outfit, Mm -hmm. that they use that cherry blossom fabric that they'd used for the town clothes, that one town clothes top. Yep. And I love that fabric. You don't really see it in the preview. You don't really notice it until you start dyeing it or see it on someone Mm -hmm. else dyed different colors. It's very pretty. Right. They kind of remind me a little bit of the embroidered pants, like the very first set of craftable light armor. But then you've got like the the metal cod piece, I guess. Yeah. I like the big um, rope ties on the back of the lady ones too. It's pretty cool looking. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm considering it, but I'm still thinking about ancestral armor too. So at least on Alona, my my human character, it does not make her very svelte. <laughs> that That's true. There. It's kind of bulky, <laughs> but still beautiful. Hmm. hmm. Okie dokie then. <laughs> now for some truly spoilerific things. In case you didn't know, the saboteur of the Zephyr Sanctum was Traitor Aaron, and you may be wondering. Who the heck is that? Well, he was the traitor who was trying to get aboard the Zephyr Sanctum while we were here and parked this last time for Bazaar of the Four Winds. Or, I'm sorry, Festival of the Four Winds. Mm-hmm. He was in the Bazaar of the Four Winds, too. Oh, was he, too? Yeah, he was just, uh, apparently, just as you first entered the zone off the boat, he was down mm-hmm. there and he was like, ooh, these Zephyr Zephyrites are pretty cool. Huh. That was it. That was all you saw from him in the first one. Interesting. Well, he was going on to the Zephyr Sanctum trying to join their crew. He and 
also agreed to leave all of his worldly pe- possessions behind, which makes me wonder how the heck he sabotaged it if he left behind all of his possessions. Industrious? Crazy? Silvari? possible. Yeah. Silvari ingenuity. They're smarter than you give them credit for. And crazier. That too. I was impressed with the fact that somebody thought to go ahead and cap all of this and super awesome thanks to Hyacinth Vale for making sure that everybody could look at this and be like, oh, well, that's who that was. Because I know I was like, oh, it's that guy who was trying to get on the ship Uh for some reason. So (laughs) it was nice to be able to put it together properly. Yeah. I love that they, and and they just did it not because they really thought much would come of it. He, they just thought he was an interesting character and exactly. wanted to take screen caps of of everything he said. I'm like, oh yay! So yeah, I like that. Hunter was saying that Timey acknowledged that he was an engineer, and someone else acknowledged that I was a human noble, and that is what we're talking about next. Redditor Porturan made a post about that, that Tommy recognizes your race and profession. Also, it was Belinda, I think, or maybe other people too. I think Riot Alice will Mm -hmm. acknowledge if you are street rat and Belinda, apparently her conversation with you before you enter dry top is different Mm -hmm. depending on your race and if you're human, which background you choose or had chosen at, Mm. at creation. No, I could see then at that point there is replayability if you're playing on other characters. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was neat. It is pretty neat. Because I was playing on my Norn, I don't think I got anything that was um, particularly different. So, Did you do Belinda on your own, that part? I had not. I only went into that instance with you, so I only yeah. got the human one. That's the conversation that you'd have to do with others, other characters, right. to see how it changed. Also, Season 1 rewards are available at Laurel Merchants now. So I think it's 25 laurels and 15 gold. It is. That you can get any of the rewards that were available. And I think that until they figure out how to add Season 1 to the story journal, that this is a really good stopgap solution for people who either couldn't or couldn't get those or missed them or didn't have the game yet. Oh, yeah. And it's still like... It's a fair chunk of currency. And time. 25 laurels is, you know, Mm -hmm. 25 days. Yeah. We essentially got them for free, just our time. So. Yes. It's a nice acknowledgement of if you really, really, really wanted a couple of those things, you could. But it. Work hard for it and get it. Yeah. I don't think it takes anything away from the people that got them first run. Right. And Orlin is pointing out that there's no Tequadal wings and there's no Shatterer wings. There's also no Zephyr rucksack. So it's not all of them. Yeah, it's a fair amount, though. Yeah. Actually, what was the reward for Sky Pirates? Do you remember? Because that was the Mm -hmm. one living story I didn't finish. And I can't remember. I meant to check it out. I do not know. Mm. Because that would be what I would like to get. Brain, not brawn, will change the world. Ask an Asura. For this week's Ask an Azura, I have a tip, but I it's more my tip is what I'm going to cover next week. I said combos. I'm going to talk about combos. And then I said, mmm, combos. Did you look at the link I posted? Yes. <laughs> it's combos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> combos. <laughs> so combos are awesome. I thought of that uh, today, and so of course I didn't. They're kind of in-depth. So I wanted to do them justice. So I will be working on that for next show. Always good. My tip, I actually was just thinking about this while you guys were doing the Keep Farm pre-patch. Because pre-patch, you guys had run through and done a couple of Key Farms. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Mm -hmm," you know, mulling it over. And it was just like, oh, well, you could do that. When you're doing a Key Farm, after you've got your key, 
go ahead and finish Divinity's Reach because you're likely going to be getting a transmutation charge. Mm -hmm. And since, I mean, you could buy a transmutation charge with uh, gems, but basically you're doing a key farm so you don't have to buy keys with gems. Why not just finish the city and get something that you can only buy with gems as well? It's like, well, mm -hmm. might as well. You already mm -hmm. got the character. It's already level some. Uh, if you're doing the Guardian one, you've already got speed boosts. It's That's fast. True. I wonder how long it would take to clear DR. Gosh, probably maybe 10 minutes. I mean, you don't have to have food on. True. Hmm. I might try that because charges. They run out over time. We did get a tip from Dread Panther, who is a listener and also one of our guildies in Mock. He's emailed it through with a follow-up in the voice of one of his many, many, many Asura. He didn't say which one this was. I'm going to say it's Mary. I don't know if it is or not, but that's who I'm going to say it is. <laughs> his tip is once you get to the point where you might need 18 slot bags, cloth bags are more expensive to craft than the other 18 slot containers. And it, it is true. According to GW2 Spidey's sell price as of this afternoon, uh, it takes either 10 cured thick leather squares, 10 mithril ingots, or 10 bolts of silk for the uh, different versions of the mm -hmm. bags. The leather is four silver, three copper. If you do a uh, the sell price, I said, yeah. Mithril ingots are 14 silver, and the bolts of silk are 71 silver. So they're quite a bit more to do it that way. I mean, you're still, you're already buying the rune that's two gold. So when you look at it mm -hmm. in the term of like, it's two gold, 14 silver versus two gold, 71 silver, it doesn't sound like a huge spread, but it does right. add up. And also leather and leather and, and the mithril are way easier to come by. Oh, and way cheaper. Yeah. That is on the assumption that you are buying the mats. Actually farming the mats, you're still, the price for the mats to drop to next to nothing if you're out and about and getting them anyway for the the metal and the leather. So I'm going to see if I can do... I don't know if I can do a good Azura voice. Do you think you can do a good Azura voice? Not really. Oh, I'll try. <laughs> we did not come prepared. <laughs> I will try. I was kind of banking on you doing it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Also, I think that although the data shows that 18-slot thick leather packs are less expensive to manufacture, you have to take into account whether you will be buying the material from the trading post or if you will be salvaging or mining it yourself. Or if you are really good, you would have an underling, I mean apprentice, obtain the material for you. Lastly, I want to be thoroughly thorough. I want to include the cost of mining picks versus salvage kits. But alas, I have much more important pursuits to pursue. That was an Azura. So over on Twitter, Dibstaru decided to ask, with Guild Wars 1 in maintenance mode, is it too late to do Hall of Monuments for achievement points in Guild Wars 2? Totally not too late. Nope. There's still plenty of reasons to jump back into Guild Wars 1. Because <laughs> you can't jump. Exactly. <laughs> Let's explain the joke until it's no longer funny. Okay? Okay. <laughs> They still have bonus and festival <laughs> events that are happening, and they happen on a set rotation, so it might take a little while for it to rotate to the right bonus that you're looking for specifically. Like, if you have 29 points or something like that, you may be waiting a couple weeks before you can actually progress well, or, you know, with a little boost at least. Mm -hmm. the one thing that I did think of is that if you're playing PvP, you may end up getting stuck playing with the same sort of group of people and just kind of like rotating, fighting them over and over again. Mm -hmm. Just because I know that the community has shrunk significantly. Wow. I mean, it, it has. There you go. <laughs> if you're new to the game or if you're just like super rusty and you need a little bit of a primer, way back in 2011, I wrote a guide on how to play Guild Wars 1. And I also did a little guide about the Hall of Monuments. Um, but realistically, if you know how to play the game and you just want to see what you're missing and how to get it, use the Hall of Monuments calculator and the wiki for Guild Wars 1, which is the most complete game wiki I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Seriously. It's pristine. <laughs> pristine wiki. I can't think of a better term for it. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, I guess. I can see that working. Oh. The chat room is getting all punerific in here. <laughs> Not dodgy at all. <laughs> and Dibley, thank you for being one of the few people that are still playing Guild Wars 1. I still have it installed. I haven't been in for a very long time, though. I haven't been in for a very long time either. We should do that. 20 in three and a half months. That's pretty good. Mm, that is That's really good. good. Yeah, Ben was just saying that he needs only one more point so that he gets <gasps> all of the bonuses to get to closer to the stars. So I'm is he, thinking is, that may he, happen. Is he going to do some map scraping? <laughs> oh, God. No, I'll probably just like use my vast reserves because I'm crazy rich in Guild Wars 1 and buying <gasps> some other Hern armor or something. Ooh. So be friends with you is what you're saying me, saying to me here. Because <laughs> I'm very poor. I am poor in Guild Wars 1. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite remember how much I'd have, but I'm pretty sure. Actually, uh, that reminded me about the wall scraping. The one area in Dry Top where it's really dark. And I was running along the edge of the walls just to try to see if like, maybe there was a hidden area. But I said, it feels <laughs> like I'm doing map completion in Guild Wars 1. Scraping the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Tales of Tyria. So a few awesome things that we found in the community this week is, well, okay, I found this one. I was just like, oh, that's really nifty. This person took their necro and is going around and playing music on the harp. Yeah. And it's good. KCCOT posted a tweet today that tickled me pink. It was, I can just imagine my character's face when a Zephyrite hands her some sand as thanks for her help. No, really. It's silkier than normal. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's sand. Silky sand. I just loved her phrasing, no, really. It's silkier than normal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got anything out of the sand? Just geodes. Yeah, I got geodes and a couple lock picks. Ooh. Yeah. Actually, this is something Celeste found last week, but we put it on this week anyway. It's a Myers Brig Guild Wars 2 type thing where you can take a quiz on Reddit. Alune posted it. And to find out which Guild Wars 2 character you are. And I'm Timey. So woohoo! Everyone else can just go home. I win this. It's not a contest, but I still win. Well, you know, now that my rating was apparently Scarlet, so I guess it kind of works out that we're semi-partnered in this endeavor, because there I, seems I to be a you. lot of personality there. <laughs> I'm going to study you and figure out what makes you tick and... Coffee. Yes. Lots of coffee. And fruit juice. When you can have it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a community event that you would like for us to share, we would be happy to do so. Just send us an email and we can mention it on the show. And if you've got a burning question for our Ask an Azura segment, just let us know. Now's the time where we go ahead and talk about our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Doghouse Systems. If you use the coupon code MMOreporter at doghousesystems.com, they will double the RAM on a new PC or laptop of your choice for free. As well, if you go to audibletrial.com slash MMOreporter, you will get a free audiobook of your choice. And they're already talking about Horton Here's a Who in the uh, chat room. Because that is apparently... Of course they the, are. The, the, that's the audible book of choice for, <laughs> for, for Guild Wars Reporter, apparently. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just about on our reading level. <laughs> Today, with our, Today, with our Maguma hangover. It is indeed. 
So a lot of people do want to email us about a question or send us their community information. What are some of the ways that they could do so? They can email us at gwreporter at mmoreporter.com. Twitter is at gwreporter. Our website is guildwarsreporter.com. Voicemail is 616-666-6778. Or you can use the widget on the right-hand side of the website. YouTube is MMO Reporter Network. And remember to like our videos and subscribe to the Guild Wars Reporter playlist. Facebook is GW Reporter. Tumblr is gwreporter.tumblr.com. And you can visit us each individually on Twitter as well. And I am at One Big Pair. And I am at Selyuki. Every time I get a new follower, I like, oh, let's look at their stuff and see what they're doing. Yeah, that's good stuff. So thank you to our chat room for sticking around with us. We really, really appreciate you guys coming out and spending time with us. Even if you come in at the very end, it's nice to be able to know that you guys do care. Yeah. And I'm jealous of Abel Zombie because they have fruit juice. Mm. I just can't even bother getting jealous anymore. I don't have the energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can because I have some in the fridge. I just didn't bring it up. <laughs> ah, I see. Hmm. Thank you for downloading the podcast. We hope that you download it again next week. But most importantly, we hope to very soon see you in game.